on this episode of Edge of the Web. I, I think it's important that people are able to ask even stupid questions or beginner questions. Right. It, it should be that like they, they should feel safe asking these kind of things because if you don't ask, then you end up believing like your density seven is what I need. <laughs> and like, oh, like I can't, can't ask anyone. And then you just keep doing it forever. Whereas maybe you could focus more on providing better content if you didn't focus so much on counting keywords. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Winners of Best Podcast from the Content Marketing Institute for 2017. Here at see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. Hey, this is Edge of the Web Radio, episode 366. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. Thanks for joining us every week. We bring you amazing guests from around the world to chat about digital marketing. Uh, a lot of a lot of focus on search engine optimization here on the show. Uh, we also cover digital marketing news that's happening each and every week. We unpack some great marketing topics for you, our audience. And whether you're a freelance digital marketer, a part of a digital marketing agency, or you're part of a marketing department in your organization, this show is for you. Uh, we demystify some key, uh, regular key topics. Uh, we kind of debunk and, and break these down to, so, so you can actually uh, digest them. You can hear from the, the, the subject matter experts, again, from around the world. Blessed to be able to have this show, and we've been doing it for about nine years, over nine years, actually. Uh, and, and we've been able to uh, learn immensely from these top-notch uh, uh, thought leaders in the space. You can check out everything over at Edge of the webradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. If you're new to the show, thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving us a try. Uh, we're, we're basically rolling out a show each and every week as much as we can. Uh, we do our recordings in studio here at Edge Media Studios in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we'll then spin off our video and audio recordings into the separate channels, uh, letting our, our, our podcast go into the ether on all the different podcast platforms, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, Player FM, iHeart Media, Ari Heart Radio, I should say, uh, Spotify, uh, tune in. Uh, there's so many others uh, out there that we're constantly pushing our content into. And if we're not where you like to listen to your podcast, how in the world are you listening to this? First is foremost of the question. But if if you know about us and you want us in your particular platform, give us a shout. We'll get that RSS feed right out there. Uh, we also are on YouTube, pushing our content on a regular basis, different 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 segments of our show, so you can get some of that uh, easy consumable, easy to watch content. We also move a lot of articles and social media around each and every show. So pleasure to be able to do this on a regular basis for our audience. And we certainly appreciate feedback and commentary and let us know how we're doing. And on top of that, who we should be speaking to next. So go over to edgeofthewebradio.com. You can check out everything. The show is actually provide, uh, sponsored by a title sponsor, Site Strategics, our parent company. And we're the pioneers in the agile digital marketing efforts. Our core specialties are technical SEO, content SEO, social media, search engine marketing, uh, conversion rate optimization on your website. You got to pay attention to what's going on your site first, making sure that you're not impeding uh, traffic and you're not hiding the cheese. So uh, if you're interested in what we can do for you, give us a call at 877-SEO for web or 877-364-932 and we can have a free hour, con uh, hour consultation and possibly unpack some key things that you could bring to your online success. So with that, uh, I wanted to get to our guests as quickly as possible, but I also want to let everybody know who's actually controlling the, the, the show here. As Jacob, uh, man, he's studio creative director in the booth. How in you doing, control. sir? control. Doing well. You are in control. Uh, yeah, I can, I can mute anybody. That is the limit of my power. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and, you know... <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. We had, we did a full revamp of our studio here just recently. So you've been yeah. you've been you've been knee deep in wiring and rebuild yeah. of virtual sets and what have you. Right? I have I have spent some time behind the glass here. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's dark under the desk, so you have to bring. I had to bring in one of the studio lights to help me see what I was doing. It was, kind yeah. of, it was, it was fun. It worked. So uh, we're always trying to overhaul and 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 uh, improve what we're doing here in the studio. And the studio is also used for. A bunch of different clients here in Indianapolis that can come in and actually do, both do podcasts, webcasts, and the like. So we're always wanting to make sure that we've got this dialed in. And uh, so kudos to that, Jacob. Thanks for doing such a good bang-up job on a regular basis. It's been fun. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So we wanted to let you know who is going to be coming up on the show here soon. Uh, we're finally going to have Tim Schmoyer on the show. And uh, uh, apologies for Tim. We had a, a couple conflicts here over the last month, but we are absolutely going to lock him in, right? That's going to be the best show ever. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> He's keep, awesome in the YouTube. I keep renumbering his folder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're also going to have on the 8th, Jerome uh, Courthouse of SalesFlare. We're going to have Shay Robottom on the 16th. Incredible LinkedIn marketer. Incredible. If you haven't come across her, follow her on LinkedIn. Fantastic uh, uh, individual. Shama Hire of Zen Media. Will Critchlow is going to be coming around with the 15 top uh, SEO events. Uh, I'm sorry, SEO in 15 years. Uh, we uh, had a look at uh, he put together an entire timeline of SEO changes, and it was just fantastic. We're going to have him on. We're also, also going to have Dixon Jones on from Inlinks to, to talk about schema. Uh, get, that topic always comes back around, and uh, we want to make sure that you, our listeners, understand how important structured data is. If you're interested in being on the show, or if you have someone that should be on the show that we haven't talked to in a while or ever, give us a shout on our email, info at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's info at edgeofthewebradio.com. Be sure to set your reminders on YouTube when you get notified when we go live or when we premiere a video. All right. Check out all our bonus material. We always have a news podcast uh, along with our interview. So that's that's going to be invariably linked with our uh, into our podcast. But check that out because we're always rolling out these news articles. We just did a full take on some Google information here with John Mueller. And uh, it's a good show. Check it out. And then come back around to the interview. Or listen to the interview first. And then check out the news. Or do the news first. And then check out the interview. It is completely up to you. Uh, also, sign up for our newsletter. It's free of charge, obviously. Uh, we're sending it out each and every week. Uh, if you sign up to the um, text to the, to the number 22828, the word Edge Talk, you can sign up right there or go over to edgeofthewebradio.com, sign up right there, and uh, we'll be continually sending out what we covered each and every show, insights from the uh, interview, and much more. Yeah, every once in a while, a pro tip as well. So, that said, let's meet this week's featured guest. Now it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview with John Mueller, Webmaster Trends Analyst at Google. All right, from Zurich, we have John Mueller, Senior Webmaster Trends Analyst at Google. John, how are you doing today? Doing great. Fantastic to be here, Aaron. We are so appreciative of you returning to the show. We had you on a few years ago, and uh, just recently, we have been interviewing your cohorts in crime. That's Gary Ish and Martin Split. So we've, we've got the man of the hour, John Mueller, and uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, just a recent Twitter conversation. I literally uh, tweeted that he works for uh, Google Analytics, and that turned up the hornet's nest now, didn't it? <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, and Gary like, Gary pounced on that immediately, and then Barry jumped in there, and it's still ongoing right now. So that's, that's one way to promote oh, no. the show. <laughs> it's one way to promote the show, <laughs> <laughs> and the conspiracy uh, connection started started to jump in there. Of course, webmasters and Google Analytics are combined. They, they they're uh, never mind, guys. All right, sorry about that, John. We so really... you did that on purpose, like, to promote. <laughs> no, 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 That's no, a no, cool no. Strategy. <laughs> it got people looking, right? No, it was literally a late night tweet, and I got to be careful with those because they can be my undoing. It's, it's like feeding oh, feeding man. your what is it, the, the mogwai after midnight. Exactly. Don't <laughs> feed the mogwai. <laughs> All right. It's so, not just you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a filter on that. You can only tweet certain during certain hours. Anyway, uh, John's a return guest, and we certainly appreciate the time with John uh, being a senior webmaster trends analyst over at Google. You've been working there uh, since September of 2007. And ju just for our audience who doesn't know John, if you're in SEO, you should absolutely know what John's doing. He works together with Webmaster Central, Sitemaps, and search quality teams at Google and helps make sure that the information flows freely between webmasters and engineers at Google. He regularly writes uh, for the webmaster uh, Google Webmaster Central blog and is an avid participant in the webmaster help groups. And uh, he's just recently uh, kind of cullied this uh, search uh, relation, uh, uh, what, what do we call it? The, the search uh, relationship team? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think the title is always a bit tricky because at, at Google, like you can pretty much 
pick your title. Um, so I, I don't know what, what Gary told you his title was, for example, and, and not his boss. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think he's a, a purveyor of, of happiness and uh, good thoughts. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and, and I think he mentioned himself being an elf in one way, shape or form. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, uh, Martin, uh, uh, is, is the purveyor of uh, bright and shiny unicorns or something like that. Um, yeah, everybody picks their own title, but you have the search relations team that you're, you're part of. So, so tell us a bit about your path in your industry and uh, how you got to be at Google, please. How I got to be at Google. Oh my gosh. So long ago. Yeah. Um, so let's see how far. So I, before, before joining Google, I had a small software company. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing various kinds of software. And we, like, like everyone at that time, like you make a website because it's something new and you try things out. And uh, one of the things that came up right about then was sitemaps. So kind of that XML format where you put all of your URLs in. Yep. And that was really fresh. So because it, it seemed like a good idea, I created a, a sitemaps generator that would crawl your website, uh, kind of like you would use Screaming Frog nowadays mm -hmm. or any of the other tools. And uh, it would create a sitemap file for you. So I started with that and started kind of interacting a little bit in Google's kind of forums. I, it was like a right. Google group, I think, at the time. Right. And uh, at one point, got an email from someone from Google and was like, hey, would you like to come and visit the office? And that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, I, I almost didn't get that email because it came to one of the domains where I just rarely even check email. So that was <laughs> good luck, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it was interesting to meet uh, the, the folks in the Zurich office. It was a tiny office at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it all went downhill from there, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've been there for a long time. Uh, you're going on your 13th year, yeah? I think so. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you certainly have... Uh, been in the pocket of communication to webmasters and SEOs. Um, uh, you're in the same lane with Matt Cuts. You kind of took over the reins of, of communication and uh, also built out a team to be able to handle a, 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 the communication to SEOs and webmasters and um, business owners uh, the like because they're there are some questions that get asked regularly whenever Google search changes, uh, because obviously uh, it directly ties to our businesses and and how we rank and and, and how we how consumers find us. So um, uh, Martin and uh, Gary, our previous interviews, um, they, they 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 shared with us that uh, there was some pivot and some change inside of Google that this should not be one person's job, right? Yeah, yeah. I I mean it's. It's always tricky to uh, try to quantify how many people should be doing something like this, mm -hmm. um, but but it is something where we try to share the load a little bit, and different people have different uh, specializations. Like Martin is really strongly focused on the JavaScript side of things, where Absolutely. we we don't have as much background information, and it's a matter of being able to talk to the people who've been doing this for a long time and going out to developers and saying, oh, you should do it like this, when you never actually have done it like that, mm -hmm. that's that doesn't really work. You have to be able to speak their language. Uh, so it's good to have a, a number of different people in a number of different locations who can help kind of make sure that the communications are working in a way that is understandable and that comes across as someone who knows what, what they're talking about. It's not like, theoretically, you should make a website like this, but more, well, I, I have practice, I've done this before, and this is what you need to do. Right. I think that's a, a very smart uh, uh, differentiation, and it goes to different specialties as opposed to having one person that may very, be very well be a little bit more restrained from offering up information because they're just not armed with the, the various skill sets that you're talking about. So um, you, the search relations team has, has been developed. When did it actually get developed? A couple of years ago, right? Um, I mean, we 
initially started as the, the Webmaster Trends Analyst team, which is probably what threw you off with analytics. <laughs> it, it throws lots of people off. Um, and uh, at some point, we moved kind of internally within the organization. We were kind of like as a small team that doesn't really fit into any particular group mm -hmm. in, in a very clear way. It's like, we're not really engineers, but we work with engineers. Like, we're not uh, just purely PR or marketing, but we, we also do some communications. Uh, so at some point, we moved to the developer relations team, which mm -hmm. is a, a bigger team at Google that does things like Google I.O., where we talk about all of the different technologies that Google have and uh, kind of helping developers to implement those. Mm -hmm. And SEOs aren't really always developers, but sometimes they are. And I think that's kind of the, the closest group uh, within Google. Right. So we decided to kind of be a part of that bigger developer relations team. And since we focus on search, we're the search relations team. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where those those names came from. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, over the course of these years, um, and, and you've really been uh, gearing in uh, the, the probably tail end of last year into into this year. There's been a lot on your plate communicating, um, and and you're touring touring you know, a lot of different shows like this. You're certainly in all the different conferences up until COVID came through. Um, so the, your plate has been full with a lot of communication uh, that you, that you needed to do, and and you know. You you do take a really good line of of uh, keeping the peace and and communicating what's happening, what people should be paying attention to, and and uh, the 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 realm of hey, why isn't my site doing this type of type of communication is always there, and you have a very balanced and diplomatic. Uh, way of, of of calming people down. So we appreciate that greatly. But with additional re resources like Gary and Martin, you you have a lot, um, as well as uh, Danny Sullivan as a search re uh, liaison. Google really ha has stepped up the communication game. There's no longer this somewhat stoic edifice that you're that that we couldn't penetrate. You're you're sharing information. You're talking about different different glitches and things like that that never were part of the of the dialogue um, years back. So I mean, kudos to to you uh, making sure that we that there's a good deal more transparency and 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 uh, uh, well, just that. So kudos. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> more than welcome. So the search engine relations team just uh, geared up a podcast. And I want to talk about that real quick. Uh, search off the record. You guys are, 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 you work off of each other very, very well. I mean, it almost sounds like a comedy routine. And I know it's not <laughs> that way, but my gosh, you're all doing it virtually. And um, uh, the, the, the personalities couldn't be uh, more complimentary. You've got Martin there who's always happy. Always. And then you've got Gary who's not. <laughs> but I mean, they both have a great sense of humor and they just deliver it well. So tell me why you thought about the podcast and how is that podcast going for you right now? Um, yeah, I, I think one, one of the things we, we've been wanting to do is to provide a little bit of an insight into kind of what, what goes on in, in making decisions around what we talk about externally. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we also wanted to try out a podcast because we thought like maybe try a different format uh, for a change and see how that goes. And uh, I, I think we came up with the idea towards like beginning of the year that mm -hmm. we should start doing this. And uh, then all, everything around coronavirus happened and kind of blocked everything. But uh, it's, it's been great to be able to pick this up again, and kind of try things out a little bit and do things maybe in a way that we wouldn't do with, with a traditional YouTube channel or with blog posts, mm -hmm. where you're kind of creating this persistent documentation that will stick with you forever. Where right. with a podcast, it's a lot easier to say, well, we're thinking about doing these kind of things. We don't know, maybe it'll change. <laughs> and uh, that, I, I think that makes it a little bit interesting also for, for people externally to listen in because it's not, right. it's not so much that like, well, one person decides and then everyone else has to do that. Uh, it's really kind of a, a lot of ideas that flow together mm -hmm. and you have to 
pick some things and kind of discard some other things. And it's so. not PR and it's not the official stance of it's you're 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 sharing some of the the, the back and forth the, the thinking styles that are that yeah. are there. And uh, on top of that, uh, kind of rolling around key topics. So uh, 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 Martin plays a particular role in that that particular communication, that particular podcast. Uh, he brings up JavaScript, obviously, regularly, and you actually kind of take on um, that 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 consumer's view of of not understanding sometimes uh, the, what JavaScript can really do, and you help the listeners actually understand the value of JavaScript as it applies to SEO and, and web dev and UX. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also, I, I think, the case that even within Google, it's not that when there's one opinion that everyone just shares that opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like you see in the podcast, when Martin talks about JavaScript, Gary is like, I don't, I don't <laughs> like JavaScript. And that's, that's I, I think, just, just a part of, like, I don't know how, how you interact with different people. Mm -hmm. And that keeps it a little bit interesting as well. It's not just like when Google comes out with one message, it's not that, well, this is the exact message and you have to learn it by heart yep. kind of thing. There's There are always discussions happening internally. And that happens with JavaScript, that happens with structured data, with AMP, with all of these other new technologies that we're working on. Um, all of those discussions, they usually help us to improve the message and help us to improve kind of what what works well, what doesn't work well, the, the documentation, the tools, all of that. So that's always really fun. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. The last show you were doing, Gary was listening to Martin go through an entire uh, litany of uh, JavaScript uh, rendering, a third-party rendering of JavaScript. And the one note that he took from the entire thing is do not use JavaScript. <laughs> Which was awesome. Anyway, yeah. So I mean, you're you're doing a good job, and we appreciate it. Uh, uh, kind of um, developing some content in some of the other digital uh, con consuming lanes uh, that we, that we're in, and the podcast certainly being one of them. So um, that's you're you're you're, uh, you're focused on that. Um, what have you seen from the SEO community as the search relations team has has been? putting out more content as you've certainly been in this role for 13 years. You've seen a lot of evolution of the SEO community. What have you seen recently in the last few years that you can comment on of just um, maybe the personality of, of SEOs or their, their, uh, their, their communication or their thought leadership? Give me some insights that you may have on, on, you know, in that space. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think, I think there are a few things that uh, that are happening which I I wouldn't necessarily have predicted, uh, which I, I I think is good. I mean, having some kind of changes along the way that you don't expect it makes things a little bit interesting. Uh, one of the things that that I notice is there are more and more people who are interested in actually doing development, doing programming. Mm -hmm. um, so all, the whole movement of so should SEOs be doing Python or not? I I think that's that's a fantastic discussion to have, and it's it's really cool to see more and more SEOs kind of think about the technical side of things, like what goes on inside of an algorithm. Yeah. And I think I think that really helps the the SEOs to understand what what they could be doing differently, and what what might be happening when they see something specific happening in search. It's not like this big magic black box that suddenly decides that this is more important or that is more important. But actually, there, there are lots of small if statements in there. Mm -hmm. And all of them combined, they lead to something kind of in, in a logical progression. It's not like you have this computer and you put a whole bunch of websites in and it brings a whole bunch of websites out. It's There's actually a lot of work involved in doing that. So that kind of movement to... Um, I don't know if I would call them more technical SEOs mm -hmm. or at least kind of understanding of programming languages. I, I think that's fantastic. Like obviously not every SEO needs to do that. Uh, SEO is, is a really broad area. There's lots of technical stuff there. There's lots of non-technical stuff there and it needs all sides. It's not that everyone needs to do everything. Um, and the other big thing that, that I'm a really big fan of is the, the whole, uh, is is a group put together by by someone in London, the Women in Tech SEO group. Yes, absolutely. 
And uh, I, I just love what they're, they've been doing. So kind of building up this community of women who are active in SEO, who are interested in the technical side of SEO, and kind of encouraging them to be more active, um, putting together a speaker list uh, that anyone can look at. Like if you're putting on a conference, there are a whole bunch of speakers uh, that are able to speak there. That's, I, I think, really fantastic. And the, the cool thing they just started is the a kind of a mentorship program mm -hmm. uh, where you can sign up to be a mentor for other people in the group. And you kind of share that load a little bit. And really kind of building up that community, I think, is really fantastic. That's something that... In the past, I would have thought, well, you know, this will just kind of naturally, organically happen, that the SEO community will become a little bit more diverse over time. Mm -hmm. But it does take a lot of work to actually get there. And it's, it's fantastic to see them doing this. Absolutely. And the mentor program itself is, is a unique uh, 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 development because that has been in the SEO community a bit of a... Uh, um, uh, as much as there are communicators and educators and thought leadership, there hasn't been a collective bootstrapping of individuals. You can get in there and and learn from the best. That's never really been that available, and it's it's incredibly laudable to be able to see that group not only take on and be able to define uh, 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 diversity, but also be able to out do outreach and teach at the same time. That that's a that's a that's a double-barreled uh, uh, win right there. So, absolutely, that's a great, great reference there. So, over the over overarching, you would you would recommend that SEOs do have some technical leaning and actually do understand some of the factors that, that go into how a uh, a website is 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 digested by the spiders, how you process an index. Uh, it should be part of the the, the bandolier of understanding uh, from an SEO, right? I I think to some extent that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Like understanding the the basics of of how a website works, how the requests go back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's something that just makes your life so much easier when things go wrong because there's always something that goes wrong. Right. And the more you can kind of reduce the the kind of potential sources of problems by figuring out like it, is the page returning 404 or does it have a no index on it, uh, the more you can quickly focus on the actual issues. And that mm -hmm. might be you need someone to, to help you on the server side to figure things out. Or maybe it turns out, well, I can be pretty certain that server side, everything is OK, and I need to focus more on my content or maybe something else. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. We recently had a few shows here, uh, one in particular that that uh, really focused on should SEOs have technical knowledge. And it really gets down to the the environment you're in corporately is that there are some dev developers. you got to learn vernacular. You have to be able to speak the coder's language, at least to a degree of, of, of common knowledge, that means that the, the the engineers and the developers also get a seat at the table to be able to make adjustments and discuss. If you if you're if you're in an SEO position for content only and you're not sharing or not learning how it needs to be actually uh, uh, presented from a, from a from a page level and in a, in a coding level, um, you're never actually going to be able to get the buy-in from engineers to be able to carry number of the initiatives that need to happen. So um, it, it is clear, as we've talked to a number of, of uh, thought leaders, that you got to have that in your, in your back pocket. And I, I'm from a technical standpoint, I don't know why, why you wouldn't. It just makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> but that's yeah. a bit biased. I, I, think, I think it's important to have some amount of that, but I don't think all SEOs need to have mm -hmm. kind of like this really detailed technical background. Sure, sure, because sure, sure. there are just so many things around SEO that are all about marketing and understanding the user and about making pages that work well for the user now, where you have to understand what are people searching for, what are they trying to find, yeah. what kind of content can you provide now that they will need in a month or so. And that's something where you could say, it's well, it's not technical SEO, but ultimately, that's what will be ranking in the search results then, right? It's not... It's not something that's totally disconnected. And more and more, I find 
uh, from a technical point of view, a lot of the platforms just work really well out mm -hmm. of the box. So if you set up WordPress, yep. you don't have to do any kind of fancy URL tweaking to make it work. It it just basically works out of the box. You don't need plugins. You could if you wanted to, but you basically can just make your WordPress site and it'll appear in search normally and mm -hmm. you can purely focus on the on the content. Yeah, CMSs have evolved so much and uh, man, we're we 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 got to give a little bit to uh, what what has been involved. I mean, we I mean, you you, you program back in the day with text pads, right? I mean, <laughs> We go back all the way and, and to be able to see how easy you can spin up a website now and that it's actually really good code is just amazing. And and I guess uh, some of the SEOs don't kind of take that for granted right now. And uh, you know, they're standing on the shoulders of, of some, some fantastic development. I remember some old CMSs that didn't do nearly <laughs> what, what WordPress can do now. Um, so, so with that, uh, you know, I, I wanted to circle back around to not only the SEO community, but also um, their involvement and these conferences. We talked about this in the news, but there's been obviously the COVID shutdown and there's been so much that uh, we're not doing anymore. And a lot of conferences that are really good at connecting people just aren't happening. Uh, they, we've evolved to virtual conferences. What's your take on these virtual conferences, uh, how are they? How are how how well accepted are they being? And uh, are we in maybe a, a virtual conf a conference fatigue now? I I think there is definitely some amount of fatigue. Um, I I noticed that in kind of coming into the summer where it seemed like every week there were two or three big virtual conferences happening, mm -hmm. and you have that constant fear of missing out and you end up doing your work while having a, a live stream in the corner mm -hmm. uh, on your screen and that i think is is really tiring and then you end up in a state where you don't actually do either of these really well uh, so right. that's something where i i don't know it, it feels like the the format could be evolved a little bit to, to try to make it a little bit more interactive, mm -hmm. um, to kind of bring across that feeling of you're in this big group of people and you're watching, watching someone present something and you're able to go out afterwards and discuss it with that group of people. Uh, that would be a little bit cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, we are, we, again, we talked about this on the news side of things, but we, we were poised to be able to take advantage of this technology and thank, thank God that Zoom was there, right? Because that, that's just been, um, a, a, a blessing, uh, during this period of time, as well as all the other platforms. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I got like six or seven different conferencing platforms on my, on my machines now because everybody's using something different. And they've got all their packadillos, but um, from a conference standpoint, um, there there does need to be this 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 next level of engagement and buy-in because I mean these conferences are trying their best. They truly are. SMX and and the the different conferences they I mean that's that's their entire business model is connecting people. And on top of it, these conferences. You were always going there. You're buying in. You were connecting. There was an emotional investment as well as a financial investment, and those those things kept you in the space to learn as much as you can. Now we're in a space where the conferences are trying to be able to bring the same information, but the the retention and the the absorption of material just is not the same at all. So we really do want to see something better there. But what are you, what's your forecast? You obviously I'm not going to ask you to forecast COVID, but down the way, do you see this as uh, going back full bore into a full physical conference or kind of a hybrid model? I, I kind of hope it, it ends up in more of a hybrid model um, because it, at least from, from my side, one of the things I noticed in, in the last couple of years is it's very easy to spend a lot of time on travel. So yeah. you, it's easy to commit and say, oh, I'll come to this conference. I have time during that week, but then you're on the on the road for a full day. And you have kind of all of this lost time in between. And it it feels like on the one hand, it would be nice to be able to be present with, mm -hmm. with a lot of these conferences, mm -hmm. either presenting something or listening in. Um, at the same time, it's like not having to invest that full travel package uh, 
that would also be nice. So yeah. it would be really cool if we could figure out some model that worked similarly to in-person conferences where there's still an incentive to be there in person and to kind of meet with people afterwards, have a beer and all of that, and uh, still also have an ability for people who, who can't travel, who, right. who don't have the ability to take off and actually go to these events in person. You know what? If Uber got around this and, and had a uh, network that every conference, you could deploy the Uber forces amongst all cities, right? And that you're having a conference meal via Uber in all these different all these different locations. And if you want to have that after after a conference beer, you can have it delivered, and everybody's having the same interaction. What do you think about that? I mean, I'm in it for the beer. <laughs> in it for the beer. <laughs> That, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Or may, maybe at, at the conference you have those, I don't know, They for, for a while they had these uh, robots that basically visited the place for you, right? Where you basically live streamed what they were seeing. They're like walking around. Um, <laughs> that might be something where like, you have that physical event, but you have all of these people <laughs> who are joining in remotely as well. Or maybe with a VR headset. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, yeah, there you go. See, we got a VR headset. We have all of our avatars there. We have Uber sending, bringing us the the conference food, right? Because there's always that that one thing that's just fantastic, and uh, you know, bring bring us the, the the plate of bacon, right? Having all that, and then you could also have like a flat Shelton, right? From uh, from uh, 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 oh my gosh, not the frost. Uh, sure. Oh gosh, what is it? Yeah, Big Bang, where you're on the robot and you've got the uh, got the screen, right? Your avatar could be at the physical conference. Now, am I just getting way outside of the lane here? I think you're figuring out how to make virtual conferences cost more than real conferences. <laughs> 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 well, I wasn't talking about budget. <laughs> I thought it would be fun. I'm trying to help John out here, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. All okay. right. Okay. <laughs> All right, I can dream, can I? Um, all right, so another topic here, real quick. Uh, I like to bring in front of you, and it hasn't been announced, but we're seeing some betas uh, come through. It's the Search Console Insights. Um, some really cool things. Uh, there's been some news about the new era of Search Console. This Insights section it gives Search Console users deeper reporting into the performance of the website and its pages, including page views, average time on page. It's the interlinking of analytics to Search Console, and it's it's giving a lot of really cool data as we see it from some of these betas. Um, what are your thoughts there? Can you share any information about that? Obviously, it hasn't been officially announced, but you certainly have seen it, right? Yeah, I, I think it's really cool. Uh, and in, in particular for people who don't live in analytics or in Search Console on a day-by-day -day basis, mm -hmm. it kind of brings together that, that combination from both sides. And that's something that I, I think is, is sometimes really hard to get, even if you're really well-versed in analytics, finding out kind of that connection between Search Console and analytics is sometimes a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. And having that in, in one simple view where you have kind of the insights of what, what you could be looking at, I, I think that's that's really, really useful. So probably something where I'd say the, the more advanced SEO people, they probably end up using the tools individually because you have a lot more flexibility. Sure. Uh, but there are a lot of people who, who don't need to live in analytics and who just get confused by all of the different options that we have in the different tools. Right. And for them, some, some way of a, kind of an overview of what's happening with regards to search, I think... It is really useful for them and also encourages them to think about search a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Because if if search always comes across as this big, crazy black box, nobody knows how it works or what you're getting out of it, right. then you're not really interested in thinking about SEO, maybe hiring an SEO or getting help for SEO topics. So making that a little bit more approachable, I think, makes sense for all sides. No, absolutely, absolutely. Would you have any knowledge of whether or not there's going to be annotations available inside of Search Console? I don't know. Oh, that's, that's like good. in analytics? Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. I would love it to be able to see uh, that we could jump in there and be able to put certain annotations based on the different things that we're doing. 
Uh, yeah, uh, it's just just I'm just pining for it. So if you Even had, better if it sunk up with with analytics. What's that again? Put it in one place and have it sync across the. Top Absolutely. Platforms. That's all, uh, yeah. If we could do that, that would be one. If you have any way to get that across over to somebody over at Search Console. <laughs> We 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 would absolutely buy you beer. Cool, <laughs> a virtual beer. A virtual beer. <laughs> okay. Um. Next on the horn here, I want to uh, cover something with you that uh, you, you may or may not want to go down this road, but uh, Google Myths. There's always a, a, a kind of a resurrection of the top Google Myths that keep on popping back in front of us, and you have to tamp them down. Um. If if you would if you'd like to 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 uh, address any of these uh, you're more than welcome but if if you're exhausted by answering these questions you don't too so I'm giving the option as well but uh, there's a lot of Google myths that are still sticking around user engagement as a ranking signal you 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 even mentioned it here just recently is there any factors that uh, that 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 tie into uh, uh, SEO from user performance user performance I I think. This is kind of a tricky topic because there there's so many things that kind of play into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what, I mean, one of the things we we've always been talking about is how we use these kind of metrics to help improve our algorithms, mm -hmm. and that essentially helps to kind of figure out what what we should be doing in search. Uh, so that's something where I'd say like that that definitely makes sense, mm -hmm. and anything. I'd say more direct than that is is really kind of tricky. Yeah, page views, um, bounce rates, things like that have always it's always been a myth of, okay, they're using that to actually understand how well our pages are being liked by or or, or uh, interacted with by consumers. Um, yeah, some some high level things make sense, but uh, it, it's not really happening at the at the at the ground level with these pages, right? No. Okay. Uh, well, Bing, Bing just actually released uh, some information regarding uh, uh, user engagement actually as a rate ranking signal uh, just just recently. So I uh, wanted to swing back around and see if that's actually the case in Google. But what about what about this one? This is always the best one. Uh, AdWords affects Google uh, Google rankings. Yeah, I mean that that has come up probably since AdWords has been there. That's I right. Guess. Yeah. Um, and what I find interesting about that one is that we hear both both effects there. So both that if you buy ads, then you will rank better, mm -hmm. uh, but also if you buy ads, then you will rank worse because then we want you people to click on your ads kind of thing. Uh, and from our point of view, neither of those really makes sense. So it's something where we work really hard to make sure that we separate kind of the, the paid side of search from the organic side of search. Mm -hmm. And that goes so far as uh, when, when people within Google contact us and say, well, my biggest client has this issue. Uh, can't you like tell me what they need to do? Uh, that's something where we have clear policies where we have to push back and say, we, we can't help you because of this kind of client and partnership relationship that you have there. Right, and if if they have any questions about search, they need to reach out to us on the normal public channels. Uh, so that's something where I I think I, I mean I I totally understand from from the ad side that an advertiser would want to go to their rep to talk about search issues because it's the same company. Mm -hmm. Surely you know these people, and you can give me some hints. Uh, but it's really important for us that we treat organic search as something completely independent of the ad side. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, well said. And uh, that's de facto. And it's always been the position. <laughs> it keeps on coming around. All right. How about uh, uh, speed isn't that important? Um, that's always a, a, a myth. And, and I think if anybody, any SEO is paying attention over the last few years, um, it's 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 even more important now with core vitals that you're rolling out through Search Console. Tell us a little bit about about how important speed is for uh, for Google in its 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 indexing and ranking. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to quantify how important something is sure. when it when it comes to to ranking in particular, uh, because our 
our goal is really to provide relevant search results. So yeah. when people search for something and we know what they're searching for, we should be able to show that even if it's a slow page. Yep. So that, I, I think, kind of sometimes drives the discussion around that where people say, well, it's not that important. It's like I search for, I don't know, YouTube, and I find the YouTube homepage, and I think YouTube is really slow, mm -hmm. or like just some random example. Sure. Um, but essentially, we, we do try to take speed into account, and it is something that we take into account, but it's not something that would override, for example, the, the relevance of a page. Right. And that's where I think all of those SEO discussions are kind of coming and going and that, well, I could be focusing on making my page better or I could make it faster. Mm -hmm. And ideally you should be doing both, of course. Um, but uh, it is something where if we can tell that the relevance of a page is really strong for mm -hmm. a particular query, we'll show that even if it's a little bit slower. Um, because like, you can think that further and say, well, the fastest page that's possible is essentially an empty page. And showing empty pages in the search results is not very useful for right. people. Right. Exactly. And exact. And you know, I'm actually delivering these questions with a bit more rudimentary perspective than than honestly what should it should be asked of. It's 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 I'm you know asking you how much of a factor it is is very subjective, obviously. Um, and relevancy is the key. Value of that content is the key. The authority of that key. Uh, authority of that page is the key, and that's what you're you've been developing over time. So yes, is it a ranking factor? Well, if it's as slow as molasses page, yeah, you better believe it's probably going to have some effect. But it's not a it's not a tenth of a percent. It's it's nothing like that. It's a it's a holistic perspective, and it's a, a potential amplifying factor. But it's not a holy grail thing at all. I, I think one way to also look at it is kind of to separate branded versus non-branded queries, mm -hmm. uh, where if someone is explicitly looking for your content, then speed is not going to play a big role. Um, if, if you've gotten people so far that they always search for your website by name, then they'll find it, even if it's really slow side. On the other right. hand, if people are searching for, I don't know, running shoes, and your website is one of millions with running shoes on there, then that's that's where it kind of plays in a little bit more, where we can say, well, these are equivalent. Mm -hmm. Which one of these should we show? And then maybe we'll tip things over a little bit towards the, the ones that are a little bit faster. Yeah, it's really about the query itself as, as well. That's what you're saying. Good, good, yeah. good, good. Uh, all right, so uh, a couple last um, social signals as SEO factors. That was always uh, something that's been kicked around. Uh, but we've we've got to keep on pushing SEO, uh, social because Google sees it as a ranking factor. What say you? I know this has been a a, a, <laughs> a regular occurrence here, but what are your thoughts there? Or is it still too rudimentary of a delivery there? I, I, I don't know. It feels... So, so at least from, from my point of view, I, I see this particular question a lot less frequently mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just because there are fewer social networks that are more active. I don't know. Or if it's just like everyone's either on Facebook or Twitter right. uh, and they're active there anyway. So it's not that you can tweak your social signals there. Um, but like, I, don't, I don't know. I get this a little bit less frequently recently. Um, I, I think the, the overall theme in the beginning was also, well, Google has all of these social signals and they can use them to adjust the rankings. And I mean, we, we don't have the social signals. That's kind of one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part is also that pretty much all social networks, as far as I know, have things like no follow on right. their lane. So uh, even if people are out there sharing something, then it's not that we will be able to take that link and say, oh, well, we will just give all of Twitter's page rank to this one link. Mm -hmm. That's that's not how it goes. No, no. I, I think uh, the engagement, the sharing, the 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 different applause metrics that can be made up uh, or can be uh, measured on a on a, on a social platform. Um, there's always been that belief that oh, I shouldn't say always. There's been a factor of people that that have always thought that if they keep on stoking that up, you're listening and you're putting that particular value. It's about, I mean, that's like a three degree separation, kind of like a Kevin Bacon relevancy to, <laughs> to, to the content. It's got to be shared. It's got to have authority links coming to it. It's got to have good quality, um, 
relative information that, that's that, that's that's valuable valuable to the customer, and and that's what you're looking at. And social does have a a, a smattering of uh, that type of connection, but you're still you're not pulling it into an equation of any any sort, right? Yeah, and I I think kind of being active on these social media platforms is is really useful to help refine your content, to yep. figure out like what people want, what what is confusing to people, what did I get wrong on my articles, on my posts. And based on that, you can improve your content. So it's it's not that these social media platforms are totally irrelevant, right. um, but it's not that one direct SEO effect nope. that you're looking for. All right, I'm going to give it to you here. What are some other myths that you keep on hearing about that you'd like just to to not see <laughs> come back around again? I I don't know. So I mean, people ask us about the myth uh, overall, mm -hmm. and from from my point of view, it it often feels like a lot of these myths are just from people who are fresh and starting out in mm -hmm. SEO, and from from that point of view, it's kind of a sign that actually there's still lots of people interested in SEO. It's not right. something that's dying out. It's not, it hasn't become stale, like everyone knows everything, uh, but rather there, there are more and more new people jumping in, which means that maybe there is something kind of interesting and useful on the web. And maybe search is something that people actually care about, which yeah. I think is, is a good sign overall. It's easy to take these kind of beginner questions when they come up on Twitter or in the office hours or wherever right. and say, well, it's like, oh, you just need to read all of these 500 blog posts <laughs> and then you should know. <laughs> but like, people have to start somewhere and uh, they need so some amount of guidance mm -hmm. to get there. And right. there's so much old information out there that it's easy to stumble across something old first and then to think, oh, well, maybe this is true. And then I will just ask the SEO community. And uh, then they accidentally stumble into this thing where it's like, oh, what should my keyword uh, density be? And then <laughs> they realize, oh, well, yeah. maybe I shouldn't care about this at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in our news story, news section, we actually talked about uh, keywords in the URL, which is also another, another, uh, 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 a beginner perspective into SEO. Should I be keyword stuffing this, that, and the other? And certainly check back on the news story, listeners, to, to get John's response. But um, I, I, I want to applaud you that you don't get frustrated. You've been at, at, at that position for 13 years, and um, we don't see you pouncing on people <laughs> and, and say, read these blogs. We've said this so many times that I'm not going to say the same thing about Gary, right? Well, Gary's out there as as sardonic as he is, but um, uh, you don't you you don't find it frustrating uh, that you have to repeat yourself so many times. No, usually not. Good. I mean, it's it's something where I, I think it's important that people are able to ask even stupid questions or beginner questions. Right. It, it should be that like they they should feel safe asking these kind of things because if you don't ask, then you end up believing like keyword density seven is what I need. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's like I can't can't ask anyone. And then you just keep doing it forever. Whereas maybe you could focus more on providing better content if you didn't focus so much on counting keywords. Yep. Yep. And, and there's all that ramp up for every every new SEO in there. Uh, and, and last point on this is that our SEO community that does respond uh, in in that space whenever somebody brings up some of these more simple, more uh, more naive questions, are you seeing them mentor more than than uh, pounce in the uh, in the in the uh, conversation? Um, I it feels like. People have gotten a lot calmer over mm. the years. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's just you, you get older and you become a little bit more relaxed over time. Um, it can also go the other way, of course. Uh, but it, it feels, especially on, on Twitter, that there's a lot more uh, willingness to, to actually answer people's questions yeah. without kind of calling them out as noobs. And you see this with, with Barry Schwartz's blog post as well. He covers a lot of these beginner questions too, mm -hmm. but he doesn't cover them in a way like, oh, this, this stupid person asked this question, but rather more like, well, they asked this question that they've asked John a hundred times before, and the answer is still this. Right. And that's 
I, I think that's perfectly fine. Like being able to help people to grow is is important. It absolutely is, and, and to and to and to applaud Bar Barry there, man, he takes some heat sometimes, and he is is continually putting out probably the most content in 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 this space of of SEOs, and he's not even in the bloody industry. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. Very good. I, yeah. All right, so John, I want to wrap up and and give you the opportunity to give our listeners a pro tip. Uh, what would you like to share to the audience when it comes down to search? What uh, not get not telling them what they should singularly be focused on, but as Google's evolving, as as we're paying attention to many more variables, structured data, uh, schema space, uh, core vitals uh, that's certainly more visible to us than ever before. Uh, Lay one key thing that we should should uh, think about as we're rolling out uh, our, our site content. Relevancy always assumed that <laughs> we have to yeah. deliver good content. But uh, what would you recommend? I I think it's it's really hard. So the the one thing that I always suggest is that you try new things out, even if you think they're maybe stupid uh, when you first look at them. Um, to kind of be open to trying new formats, trying new approaches, and seeing kind of what's behind things. So that I think came up a lot with voice, which used to be a really big topic, mm -hmm. somehow disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, like nowadays, uh, web stories is something that I think is is really fascinating. I I don't know exactly where that will head. I see, kind of from Google side, lots of work being done to make it possible for people to create these web stories. Yeah, and they're a very different format of content, but you put them on the web in a similar way, and. I think these are the kind of things that are worth trying out, and maybe they work, maybe they don't work, but if you kind of wait until they become mainstream to try them out, then you lose a lot of time mm -hmm. trying trying out, experimenting what works. So taking, I don't know, a small portion of your week and trying something that's, that's kind of weird and unique mm -hmm. and seeing... Seeing how that works out, I think, is always important. Absolutely. And uh, Web Stories, uh, Google launched a great WordPress tool to be able to uh, plug in, to be able to create your web stories right there. And for everybody who's not know what we're talking about, just recently, uh, within months, uh, there has been an announcement of, of the building of these type of visual web stories, uh, that basically small, small uh, vertical panels of information, like you're doing a flip book of, of just kind of three to four to a... 12 pages, just getting a particular uh, amount of content in there, not lots of content, very, very visually based. And you're actually able to publish that, have those embedded. It's, it's another level of easy, consumable visual uh, content. Where do where can you actually broadcast those uh, those web stories? Where can you actually, I mean, you're creating it and it can be embedded on different websites, but uh, is that indexable? Is it visible uh, as spiders go through and be able to see that you've got yeah. 13 different web stories there? Yeah, I mean, these, these are essentially AMP pages, right. special format of AMP pages, and you can publish them normally on your website like any other page. Mm -hmm. uh, they end up being shown in the search results, in normal search results on mobile and on Discover, and I don't know if there are other platforms where they end up, mm -hmm. but those are probably the, the primary places. And really, it's for, I'd say, mobile devices right. where you want to consume something quickly, and get some some amount of information. I think finding the balance between something that's entertaining and something that's still useful, something that encourages people to go to your website to get more in-depth information, mm -hmm. that's, that's something that's uh, worth trying out and seeing how it works for your kind of content or maybe how it doesn't work. Very good, very good. Thank you for that. That's exactly what I was looking for. Um, well, uh, to wrap up, John, and we certainly appreciate your time today. It's been fantastic uh, catching up with you and and uh, getting to hear about what you're doing over at uh, uh, the Search Relations team as as well as everything else inside of Webmasters. Um, what we ask this of all our, our guests coming on: What really bugs you about your industry right now? And you're so nice that you're never going to really <laughs> give us a, 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 yeah. a crass answer, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Uh, what bugs you right now? I, I don't really have anything in particular that bugs me. I think the, the one thing that bugs me is that I can't go to conferences and can't, can't visit people in person. Uh, but 
I, you, you can't change that. I mean, no. or maybe you could. Like, if you if you could change that, that would be really nice. I will work on it. Thank you. <laughs> well, we got to go into that virtual conference, Uber Eats kind of thing. I think we got something there, honestly. Um, well, conversely, what excites you about your industry? Um, it can either be just over the last few years or pre-COVID and, 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 and during COVID. Um, what excites you right now? Um, what, what what I really love seeing at the moment is all of the newer generations of SEOs coming online. Um, I, I think that's really fantastic to yeah. kind of have these people come in and they do presentations at events and they look at the topics that we've kind of been working on for years and years and they look at them in a new way and they present them in, with, with a fresh, fresh set of eyes and suddenly you realize, well, actually, there's a lot more still to be discovered out there. And I think that's that's really fantastic. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, final thought for our our listening audience, uh, aspiring SEOs or even seasoned SEOs and digital marketers, uh, what could be a, a, a great uh, uh, Muellerism that you can give them? Oh, man, I don't know. I feel like I... Given so many already. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we certainly want to promote what you're doing and uh, certainly uh, check out the podcast. And you're doing office hours regularly and, and uh, doing uh, the webmaster uh, communication. Any other places where we should track you down and uh, find you? Um, the, the search developer documentation yep. is, is another thing that, that part of my team is working on. Mm -hmm. So. Everything around structured data, all around search, we, we've been working on making that clearer and clearer. So that's another good place to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we want to make sure you follow John over at John Mew, M-U on Twitter. And uh, he does not work in the analytics department, guys. Just want to make sure everybody knows that. <sighs> just, just, just everybody calm down. It was late. I tweeted late and everything's fine, right? <laughs> Imagine if I moved over now. <laughs> I kind of blocked that now, didn't I? <laughs> hey, John, it's always been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time and have a, a blissful rest of the week. And we'd love to have you back on the show in the future. Thanks. It's been fun. Absolutely. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Edge of the Web on YouTube. And if you're really feeling up to do to it today, we'd certainly love you to give us a quick review on iTunes. We've done it. We've got the trifecta over at the search relations team over at Google. We had Gary, we had Martin, and now we have John. I think that's that I gotta put a feather in our cap on, on this one. This was this was fantastic. I'm very proud of what we've been able to do over the last couple months with that team. So uh, thanks to all of the participants. Uh, and thanks for Google as well. Thanks to our sponsors, Site Strategics, as well as Ahrefs. Make sure you go check out Ahrefs, ahrefs.com. Uh, check out their product that they've got. It's a fantastic analysis tool. Be sure to check out all the must-see videos on YouTube and much more insider information over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. Uh, next show, we got Tim Schmoyer in pocket, and I guarantee we're going to have a fantastic show. It's going to be it's going to be streaming galore. He's going to have so many insights, and, and I, I owe it to him because we've kind of moved the puck a couple times here. So sorry, Tim, but uh, we're geared up to have a great conversation. From all of us over at Edge, stay safe, stay well, and do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.